So today uh, I have with me Jaco and Carolyn from um, Anse Chastanet Scuba St. Lucia and Jade Mountain. Uh, this is an absolutely beautiful property with a fabulous island. I'm sure a lot of you are very, very familiar with it. So um, this is one of those that a client favorite of ours over the years, just always a solid, solid resort, a beautiful experience. So I'm going to let Carolyn and Yako uh, share their story and share those experiences with you and all that St. Lucia holds for themselves. So over to you, Yako and Carolyn. Welcome. Thank you, Cheryl, and, and hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for zooming in and uh, letting us present to you our beautiful island of St. Lucia and our resorts and Chastanet, Chate Mountain, and our diving operation, Scuba St. Lucia. Um, as Cheryl mentioned, I'm Carolyn Trebetskoy. My husband and I are the owners of, of the resorts and also the scuba operation. And um, if you're not familiar with St. Lucia, it's a beautiful island in the Eastern Caribbean. It's about 234 square miles, 175,000 people live there. And we are in the most scenic part of the island, which is the Southwest, where you have our famous Piton Mountains, those tall mountains here, the UNESCO World Heritage Site. The resorts sit on top of one another and diving is right on the beach, on Anshastani Beach. My husband fell in love with the island in the 70s. He bought a small property there with 12 rooms that was Anshastani. He added rooms. He never knew there was good diving until one of his friends said, you should really go under there and check it out. And so we virtually um, had to find the dive sites, name the dive sites, start a dive store. And uh, that's how Scuba St. Lucia began. And then um, in 2007, my husband is an architect. He designed Jade Mountain, which we opened and which is directly above Jade uh, and Chastanay. We are very fortunate. It's a 600 acre estate, which stretches over two valleys, giving us two beaches. And we even have our own helipad. So you could actually arrive by helicopter from the international airport. We are about, um, 60 minutes from the international airport by land taxi and six minutes by helicopter. And in terms of airlines, you have uh, American Airlines um, serving us from Miami. You have Delta from Atlanta and JetBlue from JFK Airport. Our two beaches are connected with, with a little pathway, so you can actually walk from one beach to the next. We also have a water taxi that can take you from one beach to the next. And um, we have tried to sort of see a Caribbean vacation in light of COVID. So we want to give you very good reasons why you should come and visit. Um, we've just reopened, by the way, on July 24. And what we're saying is obviously virtual travel is wonderful, but nothing replaces sitting in the warm ocean by yourself and uh, taking in the sun and the surroundings. And you know, elevate your vitamin D levels, not with supplements, but with real sun. This is the second beach, Ans Mamin. And in the valley behind that second beach, we have over 12 miles of mountain biking and hiking trails, which I'll show you in a few moments. Ans Chastane only has 49 rooms in total, 37 are up on a hillside. And we are a colorful property. We really speak to the culture and the history of the island. And not only that, we also have um, invited both local and international artists over the last 35 years to, to paint for us. So every room has a story to tell, not just great views, but also great original artwork everywhere. And uh, you just can't uh, get enough of the beautiful scenery. There are different categories of rooms. Um, so what I just showed you was the, the leading room, the superior hillside room. This here is a hillside deluxe room. Now, these are a little more spacious. They're individually designed. They are like little tree houses that cling on the hillside. So 37 rooms are on this hillside and they're not air conditioned. They're not air conditioned because you have a very good breeze year round and you can virtually see or feel the, the natural breeze coming through these wooden louvers on this picture here. 
The material that you see here is called madras. It's the national fabric. And we use that all over the property. And um, we try to operate as sustainably as possible, keep as much economic benefit in the region, like the, the cushion covers, everything is made in the region. This particular room has an open wall and even a swing. That's also a Hill Deluxe room. And then the top category are our hillside, our premium rooms. Now this also has an open wall. Open wall means that there is no glass or anything, but um, we only have about five such rooms. So 49 rooms, five of them have like an open wall. The other ones are a little more conservative, meaning you have walls and windows, um, but the windows being made out of these wooden louvers you just saw. Again, quite a bit of artwork everywhere. And there's also some wonderful one-of-a-kind suites. Now, who do we cater to? We, we mostly have couples coming to us. We do have families um, also. Um, we, have, um, we, we take children from age 10 in the, win in the winter season and age six in the summer. And we have a number of interconnecting two bedroom suites. For example, this Piton pool suite can be rented as a one bedroom or as a two bedroom. At beach level, we have 12 beachside deluxe rooms. So 49 rooms in total, 37 on the hillside, 12 at beach level. And these face a tropical garden and they're just a few steps from Anse Chastanay Beach and also just a few steps from the diving center, which as you know, is also on Anshastane Beach. These are our air conditioned rooms because they are in the valley and so they don't have the same natural cross breeze that I described for the hillside rooms. They're quite popular with divers if you wanna be close to the dive center. There's another one of a kind suite at beach level, the, the beach house. Um, this is just a one bedroom, but very spacious with your own garden and one of the few accommodations at um, uh, in St. Lucia, I'd say that's right on the beach. So this is all, these are all pictures of the beach house. So in terms of dining, uh, we give you a lot of choices for a small property with 49 rooms. So we have about four different menus every night that you can choose from. We have our treehouse restaurant. Here we serve a seafood inspired menu, a menu that changes daily. The setup here is pre-COVID, I'd say. So the tables are spaced out a little bit more, but as you can see, everything here is already quite spacious. So the adjustment to a COVID era setup wasn't that difficult um, because we have the space to just space things out differently. This is part of the tree house. We have an entirely vegan restaurant as well, if you're vegans. And um, here is um, pictures of the vegan food. And at beach level, we have in the daytime, a casual restaurant serving a large menu. And in the evening, we change this into a beach grill menu with a very nice simple menu of grilled fare, whether it's meats or fish. And then we also have an East Indian solution fusion restaurant. And if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you definitely have a lot of choices everywhere you go. On the second beach of Ans Mamin, we have our little jungle grill, uh, where we serve some great burgers that people keep writing to us about. And if you are a romantic, um, even divers are romantic, um, you can also have private dining experiences for, uh, on the two beaches. So we do some wonderful setups on the beach sometimes even for, for little groups, if you come with friends. And um, as I mentioned earlier on, in the valley behind the second beach, we have uh, over 12 miles of hiking and mike, biking trails. And you have in this valley, the remains of an old um, 18th century estate. And that was a sugar plantation. And it's really uh, quite wonderful to walk through there because it doesn't have any development of any kind. We, we have the bike trails there. You can rent mountain bikes from us, but otherwise it's a beautiful natural estate to enjoy. What else is there to do? And you noticed I haven't spoken about diving at all. I promise you there will be scuba diving in this presentation. This is going to be handled by Jaco when I'm through with uh, my, my part of the presentation. We also have a sailing yacht, the Suzy Q 
that you can take out for half day, full day sailing or sunset cruises. It's of course going out with a crew. We also have a lot of water sports, non-motorized water sports. You have sit on top kayaks, but also to sit inside kayaks. But we have um, teachers that can teach you how to use these kayaks. We have paddle boards. We do yoga paddle board uh, on paddle boards as well for the very fit. And it's um, excellent for snorkeling as well because the reefs start very shallow in the bay. Our diving operation sits right on the beach. Jakob will talk about this a little bit more. We have two yoga instructors on the team. We offer complimentary sunrise and sunset yoga. And if you leave the property, um, there are um, all the, the sightseeing attractions of the island or nearby. You can climb the Pitos, that's the tall mountains. You can go to the sulfur springs, sit in the mud baths or visit the botanical gardens. We also have another place you can visit that's very popular. That's our organic farm. Um, uh, our farm um, grows a lot of the produce we use in our kitchens. Guests can visit there. We do cooking classes there. And not only that, we have over uh, 2,000 cocoa trees there. And uh, guests can see how we harvest the cacao and how we then uh, make our own chocolate from our own cocoa beans. And uh, guests can either have a chocolate sensory tasting or do a whole chocolate making class. We are on the Caribbean coastline, so we face west and so there's beautiful sunsets. And that was Anshastane for you. And now I'm gonna show you a little bit more about the sister property, Shape Mountain which my husband who is an architect designed and built and we opened in 2007. It looks more like a sculpture than a hotel structure in the traditional sense. When you arrive, you first see um, a myriad of bridges that lead to the entrance door of your suite. And then the door opens and you see your suite, we call them sanctuaries for the first time. These are truly spectacular accommodations. Um, they are over 2,000 square feet in size and they are all open walled here. You remember I said we had a few open wall rooms at Anshastane. They became the catalyst for what we did at Shade Mountain. Not only do you have an open wall rooms, a room with the stunning view of the pitons, 24 out of the 29 suites even have a private pool. And you can see these are not plunge pools. These pools are up to 900 square feet in size we could practically teach you how to scuba dive in the privacy of your suite. This is an adults only property. And uh, here we um, have mostly couples, the occasional stressed out single. Um, I keep choking, I've been locked up with my husband for so long, I think I need a single moon. So um, whoever likes that, we take singles as well. Um, there are different categories at Shade Mountain. Um, the difference is um, simply um, the more you pay at Shade Mountain, the bigger the pool, the bigger the suite, but even the smallest pool is still over 450 square feet and the smallest suite would be over 1450 square feet. And as you can see here, everything faces the beautiful Pito Mountains. And of course, when it has never been more important to have fresh air. So these, you have fresh air all the time. These are non-air conditioned spaces. You have your own sun deck, you have your own private pool. All individually designed sanctuaries uh, with different pool tile colors. These were made from recycled glass. The bathtubs are for two people and you obviously, you even have a few when you are in your bathtub and all these pools are heated. So you can stay in there for a long time. This looks like a painting, but it is in fact a 24 hour time-lapse picture of one of the galaxy sanctuaries at Jade Mountain. At night, the building looks like a little spaceship ready to take off because there's fiber optic cables in all the pools. And there's of course a beautiful spa as well. We do treatments in the spa, but also in, um, in the privacy of your sanctuaries. And there's great service there delivered by our butlers. We call them major domos. Um, I do want to say that this is a pre-COVID picture. They would be further spaced apart, of course, and wear a face mask, which is now um, um, law in St. Lucia for the time being. Um, restaurant, same beautiful view. 
This is a celestial terrace. If some of you ever watched The Bachelor, I wouldn't hold you against it. I wouldn't hold it against you. Um, the, um, this, this terrace was used, I think, for four different Bachelor series um, where the final Red Rose proposal was presented uh, up on this terrace. We already spoke about the wonderful meals we prepare, also at Chate Mountain. And we even came up with a cookbook, Chate Mountain Gastronomy, that you can now buy on Amazon. And again, um, as all the hotels that have now reopened, we had to come up with, with new um, standards and procedures. You can see them on our websites, anshastane.com. You'll find these uh, health and safety protocols up there. You can also read up on the entry requirements. If you go to our websites, you'll see there is also like, a, it says resort advisory will take you through the details. Uh, right now, you would need to get a PCR test, which is one of these COVID tests that are the nasal swaps. Um, you would have to have that done seven days prior to arrival. So there are quite a number of, of um, um, entry regulations that you need to be aware of currently. This is me, and this was my presentation. And now I gladly hand over to Jaco, who is, I promise, only going to talk to you about diving. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Um, I need to quickly swap over. So Jaco is actually in Switzerland, so he's up late for us. And I thank him again for doing this great presentation. Great. Okay, can you, um, you guys can see the Scuba St. Lucia diving, the map? No, we just see you, Jaco. <laughs> okay, let me just quickly... <laughs> So this is a technology. I am yeah, stuck in the middle of the night in Switzerland and I'm just trying to get quickly to my Zoom so I can, ah, oh, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna go and share the screen um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and do my presentation. Yes. There we go. Kari, is it going? Yes. Great, okay. Well, um, my name is Jaco. I'm um, a scuba consultant and also was a long time manager at Scuba Solution. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about scuba diving. Carolyn has mentioned to you how wonderful the island is, how wonderful the resort is. Um, this is a nice little map just sort of showing you where Scuba Sanusha is located for those of you that do not know. Um, so basically we are situated here on the left hand side of the island of St. Lucia where the town of Sufria is. Um, and basically it's a very easy destination also to get there. Um, Carolyn has mentioned there's quite a few trips that you can actually get in there. Um, also, what is very important about this little area where Anshastane, Jade Mountain and Scuba Sanusha are situated is that it's actually in the heart of the Marine Res Reserve. It's called the Sufria Marine Reserve Authorities um, or Association and they are basically in this area, which means if you're going to be diving and staying with us, you're actually staying and diving within the Marine Reserve. So it sort of prevents you from spending an hour on a boat driving down from resorts in the north down to the south in order to do that diving. So it allows you to have a nice free diving, relaxed diving. The first thing you'll notice when you get to us is that we have this wonderful staff that will greet you when you arrive at Scuba St. Lucia. Very well trained, very professional, and they will make sure that your stay with us will be most, most memorable stay that you will ever have. A lot of people say they arrive at the island and they meet the staff and they leave as family. So it's very nice. This is a very nice little commentary that actually Drew Richardson gave us, which is um, uh, he was there with a group of executives. And uh, obviously for him, it's very important that the interacting and diving with professionals all over the globe. And also here you can see a very nice comment where he says in regards to the efforts of Scuba St. Lucia team, which is without doubt world class. We'd like to thank naturally Patty and Drew for that, doing that for us there. This is a nice picture showing also the layout of the resort, which Carolyn has sort of mentioned. So you can see on the top is the Jade Mountain Resort and then on Shastane build up on the hillside. But what it shows you basically is that on the right hand side, on the corner, in the corner of the beach is the Scuba Sanusha Dive Center. Right in front of our center, you have a beautiful shore dive, very easy, relaxed entry, which means you just go into the shallow waters, swim a little bit of a distance to the front, and where you see the dark blue water edge coming up, 
it's actually a wall dropping down to like 30 to 60 feet. So it's a beautiful shore dive. It's probably one of the most popular dives in St. Lucia. A lot of people do it by boat from the north. We are lucky to have that as a shore dive right in front of us. This again is another picture showing the other side of the beach. So if you look straight over to the, to the right hand side, you'll notice the Scuba St. Lucia Dive Center in the corner there. But you'll also notice here in front where the little small Hobie Cat is, there's a quite a few nice little reefs, but it's also great for snorkeling. So the entry is very easy. As I mentioned, Dive Center is straight on the beach, very easy entry into the Dive Center itself or into the, into the water. So what we normally do, because we have this beautiful facility there, is when you arrive with us, it's very comfortable to just step into this little shallow waters and make sure that your weights and your BCDs and your regulators are working and you physically go onto the Anchester Bay Reef and have a fantastic dive. Right in front of the reef is obviously fantastic for snorkeling. Where can you dive with the majestical pitons in the background? So it's beautiful for snorkeling. And also the boats come up straight onto the beach itself. So there's no long walking on jetties. You basically step from the dive center onto the sand and literally three, four steps later on, you can step onto our boat. We're currently operating basically three of these boats. They are named after previous staff that used to work with us, which is Miss Aina, Miss Bertha, and Miss Tata. These boats are basically very comfortable diving. We do not travel long distances. So our dive sites are like within 10 to 15 minutes away maximum, which means the boats are very comfortable, get you to the dive site, get you back to the resort, and you can indulge yourself in all these different menus with the resort and restaurants and with family that's probably not diving with you as well. Our latest addition to our dive fleet is Miss Bopsy. It's a 42 foot Arawak double deck catamaran. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful boat also for groups that comes and dive with us itself. And again, Miss Bopsy is a previous work employee that used to work with us for years. She's actually in retirement at the moment, but she came back and actually baptized her boat, Miss Bopsy. So it's very nice to also have the staff also very much involved with the, the operation. This shows you sort of the diving area or some of the diving areas that we have. So you basically have here on the left-hand side is the Bay of Anchastene. By the way, for those of you that's ever wondered, Anse is actually a French name for bay. So it's actually called the Bay of Chastene. Chastene is a family name. So here we have in the front, the shore dive, and then it goes around this peak in the front here, which is Ferryland in the front, goes around the back side of it. There's beautiful dive sites there called Pinnacles. And also on the other side where you see the, the, the pitons. The, the piton right in front here, where you see my mouse moving, it's a very nice dive site called Superman's Flight. Basically two reasons. Most of our dives, or all our dives are drift diving. There's not a lot of currents. It's very easy diving to do as well. Um, but that particular dive site, you have a little bit of a current flowing. So sometimes you feel like that you're doing sort of a Superman's flight alongside the reef. But in theory, it was physically Superman that flew past these pitons. In the first Christoph Reeves movie of Superman's, um, he actually flew in the movie past the pitons landed at the waterfall in the back of Nick and Carolyn's house, picked the flower for Lewis Lane. So it has sort of very nice little tune um, meanings to it itself. Recently, there's a lot of new marine um, reefs or a lot of reefs being developed also or being grown uh, in St. Lucia itself. The Marine Reserve has done an uh, extramental job in making sure that we make sure that our reefs stay nice and healthy itself. So these are new reefs that are being sort of discovered on a daily basis. It makes it great for photography, beautiful color on the reef as well. And you have these big gagonias or fan corals coming out of the reefs as well. So it's a great opportunity for diving there as well. Sometimes you have big schools of fish passing by um, and it just shows you how healthy the reef is. The next picture, I really like because it really shows you all the different types of colors and corals that you find there with all the different sponge corals, vase corals, and all the gagonias and, and fan corals inside the reef as well. So it's, it's really great photography opportunity. Uh, it's also great for wide angle opportunity. You have these big vase corals that you sometimes have that you swim through. And some of them are so big that you can literally hide away in them. Very nice little overhangs that you see as well. Um, and this is, for instance, a nice little picture from Pinnacles that really shows uh, that, you know, the overhangs and the gagonias coming outside the reef. 
Then we also have our local fish, we call them the patois fish, that also sort of circles around the reefs as well, so it's great photography opportunities to catch them as well. Very colorful, nice for photography as well. Um, we have a, a very well-known photographer that's been with us quite a few times, Stephen Frink, um, and he's also given a nice little testimonial here for us. Um, and he was very surprised that um, 20 years ago when he used to come and dive with us and took a lot of pictures, when he came back, he was very surprised how healthy the reefs are in compared to the rest of the Caribbean. But obviously he's also mentioning, don't forget about the other delights that we have on our island. So there's a lot of things like sulfur springs that you can go and look at it, the waterfalls, the mineral baths, the rainforest. So there's a lot of other activities that you can do. Sometimes you don't even have to go that far to see a lot of uh, things right in front of our beach. Sometimes you get onto the chains, there's a nice little grass bee on the chain or some of the snake eels coming through the reefs or if you look very close, a lot of Christmas tree worms that you see on our reefs as well. So there's no need to sort of go very far. Um, I'm just gonna go through a little bit of nice little things that we've encountered onto the reef. There's a very nice little file fish. Um, which makes great photography opportunities again. There's a very nice Caribbean pipefish. There's quite a few of them on the house reef, so people quite like to take pictures of them. Then we also have another grass bee, which is sort of hiding one of these nice little sponge corals that you get there. Um, we have some resident creatures and critters on the reef as well. This is a very nice uh, red frogfish that we uh, spot regularly on our reef as well on the shore dive. So the dive guides will definitely show you where they are and what they look like. And we also have a yellow frogfish that we also have on the house reef um, and some other creatures there. You can see the flying gunard and also a triggerfish that you see there. Very lot, a very, um, a lot of um, um, sort of juvenile fish that we get as well. Um, shows a very nice healthy reef. He has a nice little juvenile blue tang uh, that you can find there. Or if you look closer, you'll find the little blaney hiding away inside the brain coral. Um, this little picture just sort of shows you how nice the healthy polyps look with us. These are pictures that's been recently taken as well. And they always say if your polyps are healthy, you have a healthy reef as well. And that's why we have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful corals coming up then um, in our reef. Colorful and big. Here's a very nice little big vase coral. If you look closer into the vase corals, you find a lot of little small uh, banded shrimps as well, hiding inside the vase corals, or sometimes between them a spotted moray. So it's a very nice um, photography opportunity, um, and you, you'll quite enjoy diving underneath these pinnacles and caverns. Um, what I quite like is when you dive around the house reef is on the right hand side, you'll see these beautiful purple vase sponges. They look luminous, really come out quite nice and bright. So it's quite nice to have a look at that as well. Nice little picture of a banded moray. So if you look closer, there's a lot of things that you will see even on the sand floor. You'll find some slipper lobsters or even some crabs hiding into the, um, into the vase corals. All right, then we have a little funny story or interesting story there. We have, uh, some of you have probably dove with us before, have heard about um, a creature called the thing. There's a very nice little picture of, of a thing. It's sort of like a segmented worm with a head here on the top right-hand side. So every segment has its own little feet itself. Um, so a couple of, you know, quite a few years ago, 20, 20, 25, 30 years ago, they've spotted this creature on our reef. Um, and they didn't know what it was called and they called it the thing. Um, so funny story, um, about a few years ago uh, at the DEMA trade show, which is an international dive trade show, somebody came and said that Paul Newman has found the thing and it's in its book and it's finally named. I ran over, took the book, opened the book, and when I opened it, it was still called the thing. So if you want to see some things with us, then uh, come and dive at the On Sustainé Reef. Right in front of our shore dive, it's a really nice little sandy patch where our boats are normally moored. Uh, and normally if you do the shore diving afterwards, you'll go and hunt for these little Caribbean seahorses. They're really pretty and it's quite nice to sort of see them, you know, swirling in the little current as well. Um, right in front, we also have a dive site called Turtle Reef. It's a, a nice dive site. The turtles sort of gather on this reef and in the evenings they would crawl up onto the beach and then lay their eggs. And a lot of times when you're lying on the beach, you will find some sea turtles hatching alongside your sunbathed chair and they crawl and they go to the beach 
So it's very nice to sort of see these little hawksbill turtles hatching and crawling out. Makes great photography opportunities as well when you do that. One of our furthest dive sites that we have is called the Wreck of the Leslie M. It's a, a very nice little um, easy wreck dive to do. So if you're inexperienced with a wreck dive, this is a very nice one to do. The Wreck of the Leslie M is a 160 foot freighter that was scuttled in 1986 by um, the Department of Fisheries as a project for artificial reefs as well. It's very nice to dive on the top of the reef. You can actually do your safety stop, run about 30 feet, and you can actually sort of go around the boat and also see what the interior looks like. It's a very nice little dive site to do as well. Now in the Caribbean, there's been a lot of talks also about lionfish itself. The, in a lot of areas in the Caribbean, they've become literally a pest. Um, and they've sort of uh, overtaken the reefs by eating all the juveniles and hunting all the juvenile fish and therefore killing the fish population. Um, we've recently um, started a project where we call Eat Them to Beat Them. Um, so it's an incredible fish. Um, the chefs and the local people in St. Lucia really like it and they've been taught how to hunt them. They've been taught how to prepare them as well. It makes a great uh, ceviche as well. So what we've done at Scuba St. Lucia is we've created a nice little speciality that you can do with us. We can actually go and hunt them. They'll show you afterwards how it's prepared. And if you then want in the evening, you can have a very nice romantic dinner on the beach called the Lionfish Dinner at Ans Moment Beach as well. Um, obviously, this picture is also a BC picture, we call it. It's a before COVID picture. So obviously, these chairs would be moved apart from each other in order to make sure that you are, have your safe distance since there as well. But that's nice. So if you ever have the opportunity, really, really try and, and, and do sort of these lionfish dinners as well. And then when the sun sets, it's time to go night diving. We've seen how easy the entry is from Scuba St. Lucia Dive Center. So the night diving makes it so easy, comfortable. Uh, you basically step into the water, put your gear on, and you're onto this brilliant reef. And if you want to do it with a luminous light or fluorescent light, it's fantastic to do if you have the opportunity. It's total different colors that you see. So we offer that also to the people. Or if you want to do something spectacular, it's very nice in the last full moon of August, we've been blessed with having a coral spawning taking place. This is sort of like the, um, the every once a year that it takes place. This is a very nice little picture showing the brain coral and the ruby brittle stars. And it's interesting how they then start crawling to the top of the reefs in order to try and get the highest point. And when they get to the highest point of the reef, they would sort of start doing these little push up exercises and they would actually then release their eggs. So this is a ruby brittle star releasing the, the red eggs itself. It's beautiful, beautiful to see that. It's an exciting time to be diving underwater as well. Here's a very nice little coral reef to spawning. So it shows you basically, um, it's, it's sort of like a Rio festival, I call it. It's, it's nice to be there as well. These activities are really well supported also with a lot of groups that comes to us as well. Um, so if you have a, a family that wants to come diving with us, you know, please speak to Deep Blue Adventures and they will organize you a really nice little group special as well. Um, we cater for all individuals. We've got really nice packages running at the moment as well. So please make sure that you, you speak to, to um, Kari and Cheryl and they will definitely be able to help you there. So if you're looking for a place that's just pure tranquility, that you can just relax and lie on the beach, or if you just want to stay in the rooms and have your underwater adventure itself, or if you feel like having a complete adventure by going to the sun baths and the mineral springs, you can do that all with us at Aunt Shustin and Scuba St. Lucia. Um, this is the end of my presentation. I thank you for watching, and I really hope that I would see you guys as soon as possible back with us as well. Um, if you have any questions and things, I'm sure that Cara and Cheryl will now take over and do that for you. Thank you, Yako and Carolyn. That was a great presentation. Every single photo was just absolutely breathtaking. So 
Thank you for that. It was really beautiful. I know I'm ready to go. Um, we do have some questions for you. So anybody that has questions, we're going to put you on directly with Yako and Carolyn. So in the chat box, you can raise your hand. That's kind of the quickest way to do it. Or you can put something in the Q&A and we'll put you on directly with them. If you don't have a microphone or if you're shy, um, you can type the question in and we will ask them for you. So uh, let me see here. We do have... Uh, David Kay, your, uh, your hand is up and your microphone is unmuted. Good. Um, thank you. It's a great presentation. I've been there before and loved it. Um, anyway, as far as traveling now, these countries have different requirements for getting a COVID test within a certain amount of days of travel. Uh, she said seven days to get into St. Lucia. It's almost impossible to time a test that way. Uh, the earliest we're getting our test results is eight days and frequently it's more. So it's very frustrating to plan travel when you know you might not get a valid test in time. Can you speak to that? Um, I can certainly try. Um, it is a frustrating situation. Um, it's also a bit confusing because um, so we have been told that American Airlines will not let you board unless you have a proof of this PCR test with you. However, then we also, however, have had guests arrive that didn't have the test results and they were allowed to board and then they, they were subjected to a small rapid test at the airport. And of course, within 24 hours, they got their COVID PCR test back anyway. Um, but it's, you know, confusing to us as well because we don't want to advise our guests in the wrong fashion. And all I can do is I can send a follow up to, to Cheryl next week because we have a meeting with, um, with the authorities on Thursday. So we want to seek clarity as well. Officially, it's supposed to be a PCR test within seven days and you're supposed to bring the test results with you. But we are aware that people have been able to travel and we're allowed to board without the, the test results in their hand because we know it's kind of tricky right now to get it within seven days. I'm sorry, that's the best I can do because it's not really in our control. Thank you. And I, I think, David, honestly, this is such a fluid situation. Um, the islands are, are reviewing and changing their, their policies, you know, at different times and we're getting different updates on that. At the same time, the U.S. is is, is fluctuating crazily right now. Yeah. Uh, actually, about three or four weeks ago, I think it was it, it was it was almost impossible to get a rapid test 72 hours before. But um, you know, four days, five days, we were hearing people being able to get those results. I do know of a mail-in test. Um, where you can get those results, they, they mail it to you overnight, you do the swab, you overnight it back in an included packet, and you get the results within 48 hours. So that would definitely fall within the seven day requirement. Just last yeah. time I knew, because you know production hasn't ramped up enough yet, they were limiting it to one per household. So, you know, I also know CVS up the road, one minute it's 48 hours, another time it's it's eight or nine, up to 10 days to get a result back. I think it's just the way our numbers are, uh, where you're located, things like that. So if you're looking to go in the next couple of weeks, it would be pretty risky. But I think as our numbers start to calm down, testing starts to ramp up, um, things like that, then we should be able to meet that seven-day requirement again fairly soon. And in the meantime, St. Lucia could change everything stricter if things go crazier or, or maybe easier. Across the world, we're seeing rapid testing is becoming the answer for us to travel until there's a vaccine. It's just that each country is handling it a little bit differently. I personally am someone that prefers rapid testing in advance rather than ar upon arrival. It's just so many risks, not to mention the comfort factor of knowing that at least in the last week, everybody you're sharing your plane with, at least in the last week, uh, you know, <laughs> test is negative. But, um, you know, it, it, it's one of those situations that are con constantly evolving and we're watching all of those. We're attending different Facebook meetings online with different governments and entities and things like that. 
So that's, that's the current requirement, but we'll keep an eye on it and things can change and we would keep you up to date on that as they do. Thank you. Uh, Jacques Star, you're on. Yeah, um, I'm just uh, wondering, are there any shark dives, any, any night dives with reef sharks or anything of that nature, any feeding? Is that allowed in the marine park or not? Um, thank you very much for the question. Uh, unfortunately, um, because of the uh, fishing that used to take place quite quite a few, like quite a long time ago, um, sharks has actually not come back to St. Lucia in, in that respect. We do find a lot of um, smaller nurse sharks and things like that on the reefs, um, but we do not have any shark diving um, activities or feeding uh, that we do in St. Lucia itself. So unfortunately, um, big pelagics are not sort of the the main issue in St. Lucia. We are we are blessed with beautiful coral reefs, beautiful macro diving, big schools of fish and things like that. But our big pelagic, unfortunately, is not there. Well, I hope they do. But other than that, it is absolutely gorgeous. It is. It is definitely one of the one of the nicest, colorful reefs that you can get in the Caribbean. Cool. Thanks. I was just um, looking at here, there was two questions as well there. Um, Lily Mack has asked about social distancing on the boat. So our boats used to be registered for 24 people and now they've actually been re-registered for 12 people. So they've been reduced in, in, in social distancing. So that allows you to keep your social distancing there. And then Randy Liu has also asked there, I think it's also interesting for the other people, um, is a camera room available? We have camera facility for you down at the scuba center. We have lockable facilities for you there to keep all your gear down there. So you don't have to take anything with you back to the room unless you wanna take um, a camera with you back to the room itself. Um, and also uh, on the boats, we do carry containers to after the dives, your camera equipment can be put into fresh water and rinse down as well. Um, and there is also nitrox available at the facility. So it was just some of the questions that was asked now into the Q&A window. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Yako. Um, Lily, Mac, we had you unmuted to ask that. Did you have anything further that you wanted to question or comment while we have you on? Uh, no, that was my question. Okay, great. And same with Randy. Randy, we had you unmuted. Did you have anything you kind of wanted to add to that or did that cover everything for you? Yeah, one, one other question. Is there any type of, you know, mosquito protection or anything else with the rooms being open? Is there a mosquito issue? Um, I'd answer that with pleasure. Um, so we work really hard year round. We have an amazing insect prevention program because once you're really assure there is no breeding grounds, you can keep the environment fairly insect and mosquito free. Um, there have been some interesting, um, I would say, new products developed like um, mosquito magnets or something that, that actually work that you can place in addition to also treating any standing water. Plus all the rooms, the, the beds have optional netting around. It's also a romantic touch, but uh, you can feel free to go to TripAdvisor. We, we don't have a problem with insects. I say that at the same time, you know, there's always going to be that one guest that will attract a mosquito all the way from another island uh, <laughs> and find you at Anshastne, but generally not what we've been keeping it fairly insect free. Thank you. And Natalie Lashmet, you had a hand, you had your hand up, you're unmuted. Yeah, hi. Um, can you describe a typical day of diving at your resort? For example, are there a certain number of dives per day? Is this an all-inclusive thing or do you just arrange dive packages with the dive center? How does that go? Well, you basically have different dive packages that you can either pre-book um, depending on what package you're booked onto it itself. So, uh, but you can also um, arrange them at the dive center. So when you arrive at the dive center, you can come down and, and discuss how do you want to sort of prepare your week of diving there. A typical sort of diving day down just an ace, we do a morning dive around about 8.30 in the morning. Um, then we do like a 10, 10.30 dive in the after or uh, later in the morning as well. Um, and then we have then an afternoon dive as well. Um, there's also night diving taking place on certain days. can also be pre-scheduled depending on uh, when you want to do that. Um, and then we also have shore diving that takes place also in the morning and the afternoon. So it's sort of same times what the boats would leave, say eight in the morning, 10 in the morning, and then about two in the afternoon itself. 
Um, as I mentioned, the dive sites are very close to our resort. So you literally travel like five to 15 minutes away from the resort to your dive, come back, and you can enjoy the pleasures of the, the resort. So it's a very, very easy, comfortable diving. Um, on the wreck dive, we tend to do a double tank dive. Uh, so we go out to the wreck, do a dive, and on the way back, do the second dive. Um, we've also had people requesting doing double tank dives on a generally morning. Um, so it's very open and easily planned. Uh, for you guys. Thank you. Natalie, does that answer your question? Oh, she's gone on. She's gone muted. There we go. Natalie, was that, did that answer for you or did you have uh, anything? Yes, thanks a lot. Um, and is it all inclusive or are the meals separate? Um, so we have a dive deal package that um, Cheryl has the details of and um, that has like um, the, the accommodation, 12 dives, and also all meals included. Um, it is optional, for example, if you now wanted to add a surcharge to have all meals, um, all beverages included. So we are one of these properties, we give you the option of an all-inclusive. It's up to you whether you want to take it or not. So you can have a package with all meals, and then you have a supplement if you want to also include all beverages. Thank you. Thank you. And Brent Emery, you're on. Thank you. Uh, the shore diving, can that be done on supervised afternoon, evenings, nights? Um, St. Lucia is actually, because it's in the Marine Reserve, it's the local government is actually requiring that we do have dive guides to go with you in the water. Um, um, so it's the dive guides will show you also where the different things are on the water itself. So unfortunately, unescorted dives um, is not allowed in St. Lucia. It's just to protect the local environment and the local diving industry as well. Um, but it's not that we're going to play babysitting with you underwater. As long as there's a dive guide with a group of people in the water, you know, you can still easily do your own dive if you want to go and take photography. If you like a photographer itself, we tend to sort of link you up with a dive guide that's also well known with photography. And he will also show you different tricks and different places and different moods to take pictures as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And John Charignan, Charignan, I'm sorry. John Charignan, Charignan you're on. You speak French, huh? Charignan. Charignan. Uh, see, see my little, th that, that beautiful little image there, the reflection of the palm trees in the coffee cup. We're all dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's fabulous. <laughs> that was from Grand Cayman uh, <laughs> earlier last year. Hey, I would like to know uh, how many dive masters, you know, uh, per or divers per dive master in a group? And what are the typical profile depths? Okay. Well, normally what we try to do is now the boats have basically, um, instead of 24, we have 12 um, divers on it. And we will generally split that up into two groups. We won't have more than, say, around about six people, you know, diving with you there as well. Um, St. Lucia's reefs are very pretty on the top. It sort of starts off at like um, 20, 15, 20 feet, then it goes down to run about 60 feet. And then from there on, it typically goes down into a sandy bottom. So generally St. Lucia dives are pretty shallow in that respect. So um, say to run about 60 to 80 feet maximum that you would do. Um, so this is sort of a typical St. Lucia dive. That's why it's colorful as well, because it's so close to the, to the surface as well. Artists starting to rise. And no, no real significant walls, just sheer uh, uh No, no, we still have, a, you get some sort of like a very nice little plateau and that will sort of tiny, tiny drop down onto like a little valley down to around about say 60, 60 feet. And then it sort of gradually drops out towards a sandy bottom as well. Um, we do also have, if you do like the piton walls, there is sort of like a wall going down. Um, if you do the back of our thing, like Fairyland, it's a very nice little plateau with nice little currents flowing over there with lots of schools of fish as well. Or sometimes you have these pinnacles coming out that you can literally uh, dive through these pinnacles. So it's sort of a combination of wall diving, top reef diving, pinnacle diving, a little bit of overhangs. Um, that's what you will get there. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Dave K, you have your hand back up. You're on. Hi, I have one more question about uh, the, back to the COVID. As far as rinsing gear, disinfecting gear, 
Um, you know, we're used to just throwing everything in the same tub and now it's all different. So what are the procedures, please? They have been no. changed. Yaku, you can, you want to answer? Yeah. No, no, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. No, no, please, I'd be happy if you do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what we normally do is our rinse tanks normally are, there is disinfectant put into the rinse tanks. So it's not just pure water that's been put into there as well. So um, obviously with the COVID, we will try and, um, you know, have more of these um, uh, rinsing tanks available there. We've got quite a few big ones around the facility that we can cater for people to rinse that off as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Just to kind of touch on that. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Carolyn. Um, we have published these uh, procedures. I'm actually just about to send them to you if you want to send oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Website. Yeah. Great. No, Thanks. The, I'll check the it out. Scuba ones, the scuba ones, the scuba ones, I think they're also on the Scuba St. Lucia website now, and I'll send them to Cheryl as well so she can send them to you. Great. Yeah, I can send those to you. We also, um, as resorts are releasing their their COVID protocols, we're putting those. There's an area right on our website, right at the very top. Uh, it says COVID-19. And if you click on that, any uh, protocols that are going on for each resort or dive operation, we're posting there. And we update those as they change. Um, what I was going to note is for St. Lucia, uh, the government is actually certifying certain resorts and Carolyn can probably share this a little bit better than I, but I mean, I have been following it and for the resorts to open and take guests, they actually have to acquire a certification and get an approval from the government and then they get drop in, uh, you know, certifications that people coming in and dropping in from the government randomly and making sure that they are indeed following those protocols. So um, the resort and the dive operation have all subjected themselves to that certification and received it and will continue to be subject to random checks from their government to make sure that they're reading, meeting certain criteria health-wise on both the resort side, anything from hygiene and social distancing um, and on the dive operation side as well. And I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that, Carolyn, as far as that procedure or what you Carol, need to go I through. Couldn't it. Said, I couldn't have said it better, Cheryl. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, we've been watching a lot of it. and We've been receiving yeah. a lot of resorts, what they're doing, what their protocol is. But I think St. Lucia has been one of the most uh, forthright in actually as a government before you're being able to open back up to guests requiring that certification. So it's been very interesting for me to watch and, and I wanted to share that with everyone. Um, Michael Richardson, you're on, you have a question. Yes, uh, we're anxious to go back. It's such a beautiful resort. Um, we were just there this past fall and I have to say it's the perfect balance of diving and indulgence. Um, but when I do come back, I'm exploring the possibility of arriving by private sailboat. Mm -hmm. And are there anchorages nearby? And if there are, could you recommend one? And once we cleared local customs, would it be possible to moor off the beach and engage the dive facility off our sailboat? All right. The, um, of course, it's, it, you can definitely, it's a very nice sailing area. It's very nice to sort of sail around the pitons as well. Um, the Marine Reserve, which is the Sufri Marine Reserve, have allocated buoys inside the Bay of Sufri And there's also one or two buoys off the, the Bay of Chastanay, which is in front of the Aunt Chastanay Reef. So no anchorage is allowed. So you can actually get to one of these buoys and then uh, you would just pay an overnight fee in order to make use of those buoys as well. Um, so there's quite a few of these facilities alongside the coast as well. Uh, anchorage on any sandy spot is obviously not allowed. So you have to make use of these uh, mooring points. So we would reserve one of the mooring points through the Harbor Master? Uh, you can't reserve them. I don't think you can reserve them. I think they're on a first come first serve basis. I don't know if you've got different information, Karen. No, that's how it is, but also, um... You, the timing again is, is the question because right now uh, all yachts can only go into the Rodney Bay Marina. So the timing, I'm not sure when you're planning to do it, you would need to just again make sure that you check the entry requirements because right now you couldn't take your yacht to us. For example, you would have to be uh, stationed in Rodney Bay for, for your quarantine for two weeks. Okay, thanks so much. 
Looking forward to coming back soon. Thank you. Okay, well, if anybody else has any questions, that's it for now. So far, we've answered everybody. If there's anyone else that has any questions, this is your last chance. If you want to pop those in the chat box or, or stick your hand up now. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we have everybody covered, just kind of touching on a little bit. It, you know, we're starting to identify. We're slowly, it's complicated, it's changing all the time. But we're slowly and gradually identifying places that you're able to go and able to go in the very near future. This, you know, in 2020, um, and St. Lucia is now one of them. Certainly, it's got protocols, but that's the way it's going to be for now. Um, as I said, with all the government stipulations that they have going on, and then the criteria that the hotels have to adhere to, uh, it, it's a very safe place. Um, to go as far as with regard to Corona or in general and of course beautiful and definitely a way to get spoiled as well. Uh, it's just working our way through that that pre-COVID test requirement but it is something that that I am confident that in the coming weeks and months we will be able to to meet and as I said if that changes anyway Carolyn will be updating me in the next few days as far as if upon arrival is an option instead. It is a fluid situation, so, um, you know, bear with us. But this is something you can definitely put on your radar if you're ready to get out of town now. And there are some great packages out there um, as far as new bookings. Uh, Ante Chassane and, uh, and Scuba St. Lucia have been incredible right from the start to work with as far as flexibility in all of this. So if you were to book something and if something comes up and you're not able to go because of COVID, uh, they have been fabulous to work with. So Carolyn and Yako, we really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. And it looks like uh, we're kind of done with questions. A lot of people, we've had a few people here that have been before and said it's fantastic, the food, the accommodations service, the island itself, absolutely everything you're showing us looks exactly like that and it's incredibly beautiful. So, and then we have other people that haven't been but are definitely uh, looking at this as a place to go. So, um, yeah, everyone, wonderful presentation, wonderful presentation, sounds amazing above and below, which it is, so. Thank you, everybody. Right. Yeah. All right, so for those of you that follow us along every Tuesday, next week we're, we're doing something a little bit different. Another destination that you can go to now, but it's <laughs> a long way away. We're looking at Tanzania for both safaris and below the water. So we hope that you will join us next week. Um, in the meantime, if you have any other questions, anything comes up, you think about it, please by all means shoot us an email or chat to us through Facebook or our chat mechanism on our website. And um, Yako, Carolyn, if you have any parting words for us, please let us know. Yako, you're you're now about two in the morning, aren't you? Where you are, so <laughs> and you look like, like two, you're going strong. So thank you. Two so in the much morning, and that. it's working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is great. Well, uh, I hope to see you guys soon. I am now and then down at uh, on Chastane, and it will be nice to see you guys. I wish all of you safe traveling, and also, yeah, make it a destination. This is the place to be. Absolutely. And, and thank you for listening. And we hope to see you in St. Lucia. We are there for you. <laughs>